So now that we've hollowed and added holes, let's finally talk about support. So the very first section up here. So we click on supports and I'm actually gonna do this a little bit backwards. I'm gonna start with utilities and that's gonna show you the lift object amount. So if I go ahead and let's go back all the way down so we see the whole object here. So we have both these objects here. So I can say lift object, we can say up. And every time you hit that up arrow, it's gonna do up five millimeters and up five millimeters once is fine. So now I'm gonna talk about uh, islands and then uh, the manual creation and then auto creation. If you remember back when we were in the layout, you do have magic over here. So you can go ahead and select magic and you can do all of this automatically, even your auto supports and optimizing and bracing and stuff like that. So even from the get go, you can go ahead and use all the auto options. But while we're in prepare, I kind of want to work a little bit slower through it so you can get a feel for what these things are. And then we'll do auto so you can know how things work. And then in, you can always do an auto if you want to. And by auto, I mean auto supports and then change the supports as needed. So. We have our object here. If we're looking from the top, it looks normal. If we go to the bottom here, while we're in layout, it looks normal. If we go into prepare, you're gonna see it's gonna be kind of colored this yellow checker box. And what that's telling you is these are all the areas that as you're printing this out, and remember we're printing it out upside down. If I right click and say, flip our camera, our build plate is up here and this is actually what we're printing out first. So these ones closest to the build plate are gonna print first and then everything further away, it's gonna dip it down into the resin vat and then pull it back up. So these are probably areas that are gonna need the most support because they're basically the underside of your object pointing towards the build plate that's gonna be lifting your object out and dipping it into the resin. So that's what that represents. I'm gonna right click here and flip our camera, but just remember that this is the heavy stuff you need to support because here's your resin vat up here that is dipping it down into. So we need supports to attach it all back to this build plate that's down here so that we don't get a print failure. It doesn't like stick to the FET plate and then rip off of your build plate with little stringy supports, which I'm probably fading to and showing you examples of. And how we're gonna do that is with supports. So now as, I, as I'm as i in layout mode and I move my mouse over, nothing happens. If I'm in prepare mode and I move over my object, you're gonna see I get a little white line. So with an object selected, I'm gonna go over here and make sure support is selected. So we are in hollow, we're gonna go ahead and select support. Uh, we're in utilities, we already lifted it up. So we can go over here to manual and we can talk about manual supports. So as I hover over this, it's basically putting a, here's our global settings for our supports. We're selecting medium right now. So if I go through here and click on my object, it's going to put a support there. But you're also gonna see like a white line coming out of our object here. So if I scroll over this, this is essentially what your slicer is doing. So as I go up my model, you know, here's here's where your model kind of starts closest to the build plate. And then as it goes up, it prints out and prints out. Uh, and then eventually, like when we were looking earlier at the back teeth, you know, we're printing, we're printing. And then all of a sudden you'll get this little white area right there that's separate. And then as you print some more, this whole white area on the back of those teeth is going to show up. Those are islands. So now you can kind of scroll up your model like this, or you can actually just take your clipping and literally clip through and make it really obvious like, oh, there, there's a huge island right there that's going to need a support. So as your entire model's printing, it's going to be printing supports up and then boom, if we click on there and we click support, now as this is printing, do, 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 printing up and then it's going to print the rest of this. As soon as this island starts printing, this whole, this whole support's been printing the whole time. So when that island shows up, it'll print it and then it'll pull it out from the build plate and then put it back and that little island will be supported. Now, this, this little one little support probably isn't enough to support all that plastic because it's going to get real heavy real fast, you know, as it's printing. You know, you're creating a lot of suction in here, less than if it wasn't hollowed, but still plenty uh, that this isn't going to be enough to support this entire skull weight, if that makes sense. So now we'll go back here. So instead of actually clipping through, we're just going to use this white clip line to kind of show us where our islands are. So here's one here. So as we're scrolling through, he's like, oh, there's a little island right there. Boop, you can go ahead and support it. Cool thing in Leechy is you can go over here to islands and you can literally tell it to look for it. Now you have a bunch of options. You have fast, normal, detailed, and real. Real's gonna use the print resin resolution and pixels to determine exactly where every single island is in your slice file. Uh, it's gonna be very, very accurate. Uh, since we're just talking about this, I'm gonna put this down to normal and then we're gonna do a quick search. There we go, just took a few seconds. And now you can see visual red representations of where those islands are. So as you're going through, you can go through here and you say, oh, there's an island, boop, boop, boop. And we can just click on here and add island supports. Now, one thing to think about when we're talking about supports is, again, you're having to support a lot of weight. 
especially down when you're beginning support. So this is going to be the closest to the build plate. So what you may consider doing is instead of like light supports, which we've been putting on, you can choose medium or heavy. And you're going to see this one's updating because I had it selected. So if you have a support selected or multiple supports, you can go through here and select multiple supports. You'll see they turn a light orange as opposed to dark orange. That means they're selected. You can shift select supports. Then you can go through here and you can change these to medium, change them to heavy, or you can even do custom. Now you're going to notice like if I go from here, I'm like, you know what? I want a little more light. You can go in here and you can make them a little more light, but it switched over to medium because that went into the medium threshold. And there's the light threshold that's a little bit uh, lower. If I want to reset these, all I got to do is click and that'll go from that dark blue with the star to light blue. And that's going to go, it's just snapping it back to the default resolution. You can come in here to custom and you can say override the presets. So if you say, you know what, I want medium, you just click on these and it's to be. 1.4, now it's a star with a dark blue. Go in here to custom and say, you know what? Override the medium preset. So now the medium preset is 1.4. And when you, you know, select this and say, I want medium, boom, now it's 1.4. Or you can go in here to custom and say, let's go ahead and reset the preset medium. So now when I click on it, it goes, it defaults back to 1.3. So all those 1.4s, I can go back and click them back to 1.3. Or again, select them all. Also, when we're going through here, so we were in layout and we had object and view, you can go in here to prepare and now you have object supports and view. So now you have support options in here. You can tag supports, you can do um, applying presets. So control one, control two, control three. So instead of going over here and clicking on light, medium and heavy, you can go through here and do, do you know, control one, two and three to quickly cycle through those. And then if you have a support selected, you can go up here and you can say, okay, uh, we can recalculate supports. This is kind of cool. So if we go back in here to layout, you're gonna see my supports stay there. However, if I hit S to scale and I say I want to scale this down, see how my supports are kind of leaning. We can go back to prepare, go to supports. Well, you gotta select them first. Go to supports and then say recalculate my supports so that I'll make them, you know, so they're not leaning in. Of course, I don't want to scale my head down, but that's just they're available to you if you do have supports already made and you want to make a big change. You can recalculate your supports. Also, when we're in object here, you have some support options. You can remove object support. So with this object selected, you can remove those supports from that object. You can do Alt Shift S to go ahead and add auto supports to the selected object. And then you can shift support to new object center if you'd like. Now, the cool thing about islands is it's already detected islands. And of course you can go through here and you can you know click on the islands and they'll disappear. And you can add, you know basically we're adding supports to those islands. Another thing you can do is you can click show and that'll go through and show you all these islands. So these are pretty big and I, it's the very beginning of this. So they need a lot of support. I'm going to switch this over to heavy and I'm just going to go through here and I'm going to click. So these are supported. And when you support, it's going to go ahead and say that island supported and it's going to go, you click on the right arrow here. It'll go to the next support. Now this one is weird. It's inside of my object. Well, how do I fix that? Go over here to this exterior button and click it. And now you're on the interior and now you can see, oh, there's an interior space that needs to be supported. Okay, no problem. I can probably switch this back to medium and now we can use interior supports. Now this interior support is automatically going to start here and then go to another part of your interior of your model. It's not going to go through your model and make a base on the build platform. So it's smart enough to know that. So we'll go ahead and fix this one here. Now you're going to notice because of that, because it starts from an object and goes to another part of an object, there is no base settings we can change because it doesn't have a base. It has a tip so you can go through here. And this is true for any support. Uh, we're in the global settings now that has a diameter, tip diameter, and tip length. If you want to, you can go in here to change, change just the tip options. You can go in here to change the mid options. And that's basically this middle part of the object. And then in this case, we have base tip options, and that's going to be your base tip here. However, if we go back to exterior and we choose any of these, you're going to see instead of a base tip, we have a base options. So with this one selected, we can go into our base options here and say, I want it to be a smaller diameter or a larger diameter. We can go in here to mid and we have the mid base diameter. We can scale in and out and then the top diameter we can scale in and out. And then we can go here to tip. The tip length is basically that little, here's the tip and then it goes down here till it hits the mid. That's the tip length. Penetration, tip diameter, you can scale this in or out. And another cool thing is here, down here at the bottom you can say you can press space to switch to advanced mode. So while we're in manual, we're in classic. 
but we also have advanced. So you can click advanced or while you're just doing this, if you have pro enabled, you can tap space bar and now you have access to every single one of those parameters. So you can stay in global and then you can go in here and choose this one. You can say, make the tip length larger or smaller just by moving the mid down. You can go through here and scale this in or out. You can go through here, move this around, scale it in or out. So however you wanna manipulate these here, or you can even just go in here and just click and drag and kind of stick it to another part of your model. So you have absolute control over every aspect of the support. And when you're done advanced manipulating this, you can click on another one and it'll still be in advanced mode, or you can tap space bar and that'll go back to regular classic support mode. And again, if you want to, you can just delete those objects. So now let's say you wanted to, you know, add supports to an underside of an object, but again, you don't want it to go and make a base all the way down. Well, you can make your own. You can just literally, if you just click, it's gonna go and it's going to go around your object based on your file preferences. If you go down to your support menu, you've got overhang angle, safe distance, Z limits for your adaptive base, all that good stuff. So, so if you go in here and we have heavy, let's go ahead and choose medium and I click on here. It's going to try and go around my object so that it doesn't interfere with the object, but still gives me the support I need. However, down here you can say, you can create bracing and supports in two clicks by pressing alt. So let's do that. So if you go through here and you hold down alt, we can click here and then we can click here on the object and that'll go ahead and allow us to use the object itself as opposed to going through here and trying to create a base. And in fact, you can use this support as a base now too. So if I hold down Alt and click here and then click up here, I can create a branch. So very quickly I can go through here and I can support multiple areas just by branching off. And again, that's just by holding down Alt. However, you're gonna see we have more options in here. You can do Control-Alt to create mini supports. So instead of going through here and branching out, so for instance, let me see if I can find some areas. This one's actually positioned really, really well. I'm gonna go down here to Island and do a detailed search. Just so I could see if I can get some more to kind of branch out to. Again, this one is, the, the, the way it's oriented is actually uh, pretty optimal. So there's not a whole lot of opportunity to show this off necessarily, but you know, we, we can do it here. So let's say I've got these three islands right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a heavy. and I'm gonna go ahead and click that island there so that I get rid of that red dot but I know I need some more supports up here. So what I can do is I can go, you know, I can go here to light. Oops, with that selected, I'm gonna go ahead and keep it heavy and then I tap off so it's not selected. And then if I wanna do a branch out from this one, I can, again, like I said, hold down Alt. I'm gonna to go to the light support. Alt, click here and then here. Oops, let's go ahead and select it. Uh, so with that selected, I can change it to light and I can send a little uh, branch out from here, but from but an alternative was what I, what I can do is I can go down here and do control alt and that's gonna create a mini support. So if I hold down control alt and then click here, I can click and add a little mini support out from here. So very quickly, instead of doing a full support, you can go through here and do mini supports. And these can act as little uh, supports that'll go and support something, or you can use these as, uh, we haven't talked about it yet, but you can use these as bracing. So you can go through here and you can literally click through here to add strength between supports. So now let's talk about that. Let's go ahead and undo all that. And just really quickly, just to kind of show this off, I'm gonna go back here to medium. And you can see again, with this selected, I can choose light, medium, and heavy. So I'll go ahead and keep that one as light. We'll unselect or deselect, go in here to medium. Another thing I can do is I can go down here to the islands detector and I can say, you know what? Add supports to all islands. It'll automatically do that for me. So if we go back here to manual, we see you have two more options. We have parent and bracings. So what we can do is we can select all of these supports here. And if I click on parent, it's going to go through and look at these and go, oh, you know what? I can optimize this a little bit instead of, if I do undo, instead of this long one next to here and then this one next to here and then, you know, these right next to each other, what I can do is it'll look at those and go, this really needs two supports and I'm gonna add a little connector between these to get you the same support with less resin and less overall supports that you'll need to get the same support just for those areas that you have. Cool, however, by doing that, uh, you got some real spindly supports in here. So another thing you might wanna do is go in here to bracings, and it'll go through and add extra bracings for you. So that'll make it so that instead of one long spindly support trying to support a lot of weight or a lot of sticking to the, the FEP sheet, you can go through and it'll add cross beam support so it'll strengthen those. 
And like I said before, if we go down to the bottom here and I just start adding supports along here, you can do that manually. So you can go through here and you can again, hold down control alt and just click between these. And if you wanna thicken these mini supports up, you can actually go in here and say, change it to light, medium, or heavy, or change these you know parameters in here. So you can do that. So if you wanna do medium supports, Again, hold down control alt and you're gonna see it switch back to light. So if you wanna make this medium, go ahead and click medium. And then as you go through now, it'll go ahead and maintain that medium here. But if you accidentally click on a light support first, which is basically what I did. So if I click on a light support and then go through here and add a mini support, it's gonna pick up those light parameters and make it a light mini. So again, what you can do is you can go over here and you can click medium if you want to, or control two, and that'll snap it back up to medium. Or you can select multiples of these and say, you know what, let's go ahead and control three, make those heavy or click the heavy or control two. So again, you can make your own bracings or you can select multiple supports and you can say, you know what, let's give these a parent. Okay, that parented them and let's go ahead and add some bracings. So it strengthens up that final result. And one last thing I want to talk about mini supports, and again, that mini supports is just control alt clicking between two and creating mini supports, is it doesn't have to be a mini support. So when you go through here and you hold down control alt, or if you do alt, you can click, it's a two step process. And in fact, for this uh, one here, I'm going to go ahead and make that tip length quite a lot shorter. And I go into spacebar here. If it's having a problem, I can go through here and there we go. So now we have the support here. If I want to turn this into a mini support, all I have to do is have it selected and then turn on mini support and it'll make it a mini support. Or if I don't, if you made a, this one a mini support and I didn't want to, just turn it off and that'll make it an actual support. So just remember as you're going through and say you, you know, clicked alt to make a branch and you're like, oh, you know what? Maybe that could be a mini support. Just remember, you can always go in here and click mini support on and off if you'd like. And we've already talked about control one, two, and three and light, medium, and heavy. You can also click on a support and that'll go ahead and inherit those heavy parameters. And then the next one you create will be heavy. If you click on this one, the next one you create will be medium or light in that case. So again, you can inherit the properties from the last one you clicked.